Many thanks, Pierre, for the introduction. Um, now, from the broader landscape um, to a very specific technical aspect um, of electronic publishing and referencing, we will talk about yeah, the referencing of complex software environments as representation of research data by applying fragments PIDs. So our presentation will describe how new user requirements in referencing of research data influence and innovate the infrastructure development. We will focus firstly on the humanities as research discipline, secondly on research data as subject of referencing, and thirdly on complex software environments as example for new types of research data. Our experiences derive from the design phase of the Humanities Data Center and referencing of complex software environments will be described by us as specific service component of a data center. So a data visualization framework will function later as example for a complex software environment and the service component will be described along its two main pillars. Firstly, the application conservation to sustain complex software environments, and secondly, fragment PIDs as means to allow a very granular referencing. Our presentation will conclude with an overview of a possible service portfolio for a research data center. And uh, now to the question, what do researchers reference? nearly anything. What is good for the progress of science makes it a little bit difficult for the infrastructure providers who have to play a crucial role in providing the conditions for sustainable and stable references regardless their format, content or application. So this diversity in terms of format, content and application aligns itself with a digital transformation in science. This transition has dynamic consequences at least in three areas that are of importance for us as infrastructure providers. First, new types of research data and publication formats. We will look at complex software environments with a specific example later. Second, enhancing requirements of researchers, what to reference and how for example, in terms of granularity. Third, referencing of research data from conventional, relatively stable formats to more dynamic forms and processes. So this transition poses a challenge for the infrastructure as we have to cater these new user requirements and go beyond conventional repositories, for instance. Discipline-specific data centers may be a useful component in such an infrastructure landscape. A possible service portfolio for a data center has been developed within the Humanities Data Center project. It's referenced below, but in German language. And, but we will show it also uh, later here uh, with an overview. This is an example for a complex software environment as a new type of research data that we encountered during the Humanities Data Center project. You see a data visualization framework that is accessible via a common web browser and allows the user to assemble individual data sets and visualize them. You may visit this specific example from the Max Planck Institute for the study of religious and ethnic diversity at the displayed URL. Subject of this application is to visualize data on migration movements in various representations. For example, how many people from Turkey migrated to Germany in a certain time span. This may not be as humanities specific as you expected for a humanities data center, but we will stick um, to this example to come off the conventional disciplinary boundaries that are often intermingled with technical standards and formats. We will show you a more humanities specific example later on. Important is, we see this example as symptomatic for new forms of research data that researchers want to reference and infrastructure providers have to deal with it. 
One may think that referencing such data is simple, and it is, when it is used as a static representation in an article or monograph. But it turns more complex when looking at the nature of the data and the already more sophisticated demands of the researchers. Under the surface usually lies a more complex data structure that processes primary data, raw or already refined, via a middleware to display it in the web browser. In this example, a transformation of data in a JSON format. Although the structure in this example is not very complex, an important aspect can be demonstrated. The data, respectively the application, is dynamic or interactive. Keeping in mind that the data set of each visitor of this website is unique, this poses a serious challenge for sustained referencing. Except we will keep a very large number of screenshots and the underlying primary data. Apart from technical problems, this kind of referencing would also be very uncomfortable. Hence, we have to seek for a practical, sustainable, and affordable solution for referencing these dynamic and complex data structures. This solution must be able to point to a specific state of the complex software environment, and it must be able to emulate to some degree the human interaction with the data. We will return to this point later. An additional aspect is that the requirements and research, research practices of the users will likely change over time, get more sophisticated, and go completely unforeseen paths. A sustainable service has therefore to be adaptable and simple. Modular solution is preferable. This is an additional, more humanities specific example the Opus Postumum of Immanuel Kant of the Berlin Brandenburg Academy of Sciences and Humanities, a project partner within the Humanities Data Center project. We won't go into details here, but want to draw your attention to looking at your research data in your own environment and to consider the complexity, the layers, possible use cases, and so on. In the end, hopefully, you will recognize that the content or subject of the research data may be completely detached from its technical representation, which is the reason why we chose a more social science specific example before. Now to the role of the research data center and a possible technical implementation of our approach. Hello everybody. So I'm representing an infrastructure provider that in this context of this um, conference is the same point also a data provider and also a service provider. And we have to tackle with the problems how to actually create reference which can be then used in citations, publications and so on. And what, as Stefan already said, what you're going to present is some first solutions, ideas how to um, create reference which can be used uh, for a complex software environment, um, shortly said, uh, called uh, CSE here. If you take the examples you showed before, we have to put those into some kind of uh, infrastructure and when we do this we face different problems, some like security, compatibility or dependencies. And uh, we have to find solutions for this as infrastructure uh, provider. And the most obvious one is a security problem. At some point, if you create something which is accessible via the internet, it will be, uh, become insecure quite um, quickly. And another issue is the compatibility. So if you create something with some kind of an interface to connect to or some access via a web browser, your web browser will develop further, but the application you created will not continue to, uh, will not be developed further. So what we do actually, we say we put this, uh, the, uh, the application um, into a protected environment. This is a very simplified um, graphic of an um, ar architecture. And what it should show is that um, the different access levels of the research result, which is um, to be referenced or recited. The, in the bottom layer, you see the, uh, the research result, the CSEs. And the first way, and you could actually connect directly via your own web browser to this um, uh, 
research result. But as I said, this will become um, very insecure at some, at some point when the internet is um, open all the time. So a very uh, simple way to, to actually still connect to those it would be uh, that you install additional software on your computer and you provide your uh, access by a path number two and then you can have access to a browser which shows you the result. But not the way it should be because it should be very simple and easy to access for all to make it easy for, for after re, for reuse of the uh, research result. So we have to find a solution which is accessible directly and easily. That's why we came up with the path number three, where we added additional layer that allows you to, to directly connect with your own browser the research result, and you won't see anything in between. You would directly be connected to the research result. How we do this? Actually, we use persistent identifiers. Persistent identifiers is a well-known thing. It's used already quite often in, in publications, and you know those um, typical uh, from DOIs or SPNs. And this is the same concept you would like to use for the complex software environments. They should be decidable on the same way. For our use case, we use the EPIC PID service um, because we have direct access to the system and it's uh, easy to configure and easy to create a um, system for PIDs, which are, has to be somehow different in our context co in comparison to the UI. And uh, based on the architecture I showed before, there are different requirements to be a PID system. Uh, which we have to uh, tackle with. And at, at the end, you can see in our use case, um, which is marked in these circles, we, we finally found a solution. So we have actually a, um, a prototype uh, which shows one of these um, previous shown examples hidden in the infrastructure, but still accessible directly via a uh, citable uh, PID. That would simply look like that, that you, instead of directly connect via new URL of a browser, you would just uh, resolve a PID as it you would uh, resolve a DOI, and this DOI would create a connection ID which is unique also, and it would lead you further through an archive browser into a, uh, to show you the research result, the CSE at the end. But there's only one point, because what you then will be shown is the initial web page let's say, web page of your research result, but sometimes you would like to cite a specific state of your research result, and this becomes more complex. So you have a database as a web service, and you do a query, and this query should be uh, citable at, uh, at one point, because this is what you li like to show the others. And then we start here with the concept of fragment PIDs. Um, fragment PIDs should be used to actually cite specific state of a, of a CSE, but what is this, a specific state? It's really hard to grab because it can either be a search query of a database, it can be some kind of extension to a URL, it can be the user action interactions on a web browser, and it can actually be the full state, the physical state of the virtual machine in our infrastructure. Independent of what the specific state you would like to uh, reference, we can use fragment PIDs to transport the information uh, Within, within our system to actually create references to this specific state. Um, at, at one point, we have to say that, of course, the research result, the CSA, has to be well-defined and described, or has, has to have well-defined described APIs, which we then can use for the referencing. So a simple example you can see below, so you have the previous shown PID and some kind of extension to reference specific state. It would just point to an URL with the appended um, search query. And again, the simple, simplified architecture. So instead of um, the previous picture, we, we would have to install and also be installed an additional layer, which takes the incoming um, access information, the PID, and the query. It has to be split up. The connection will be forwarded to the uh, another layer, and the information. Of the, of the state of your research result has to be forwarded to a different position. So either it's a URL extension that has to be forwarded to the browser, or it's really an, an REST interface or an, an other kind of application interface, we can actually forward directly to the CSE. So this is already installed in a prototypic way, but it should show that we are able to 
to create references which can be used for the citations of uh, very complex software environments. Now I take over again. And I will need not more than five minutes uh, to show you how this specific technical solution is implemented within a data center. So on this slide you get an overview of the initial service portfolio of the humanities data center as we have planned it during the design phase. And the service we've talked about, or Sven talked about, is encapsulated in the box application conservation. First of all, you have to keep in mind that we handle file-based research data and complex data structures. This is addressed by the services, as some of them are for file-based data, repositories for instance, whereas other services are aimed at complex data structures, such as referencing via fragment PIDs in the application conservation. We won't go into detail for the individual service components now, but you may easily recognize that the service range is quite diverse and that most components are likely not designated as self-services. This is not only due to the complex refinement and ingest procedures, but also due to the developing nature of infrastructure in this field. Standards and best practices are in some areas not yet available. We're coming to the end of our presentation and want to summarize two take-home messages. First, we introduced referencing of complex software environments as possible and useful service component of a research data center. This new demand uh, from researchers is closely connected to the emergence of tools and data that make use of the digitization in research. So we do not longer talk about digital representations of analog data, but about digital native data that cannot be described and exploited only by conventional means. This fact is not humanities specific. We introduce to you a data visualization framework and a digital edition as examples for such complex data structures. Secondly, we wanted to make clear that these kinds of, of data partly demand new research data infrastructures that go beyond repositories. To underpin this, we introduced the fragment PID as means to reference complex data structures with specific application states. PIDs are a common and established solution to reference static repository contents and we try to enhance this technology for our purpose. Our fragment PIDs contain an individual search string and is therefore able to point to a database with an individual search string, for instance. This contributes in our mind in a crucial way to the granularity and attractiveness of scientific referencing and citing. But this solution is of today only prototypical. Thank you for your attention. If you have questions, now is the time. Thank you very much. Remarks, questions? Yeah. Thanks very much for the presentation. Um, I mean, the, the last thing you said, it, it is now at a prototype stage. You said, um, do you have a demo of it that we can have a look perhaps? Um, this is prototypical, so the research data center is not operational yet. Um, what is prototypical are uh, these fragment PIDs, and uh, here we have uh, the two examples. You can uh, look at them via the web page of the Humanities Data Center and then try it out. So these two um, complex software structures are in a protected environment, and you can roam around them and, and use a, a PID to point to the state. So I'm particularly interested in, in the user interface, for example, and all the work that you mentioned about the interaction. So if there's something, I'll probably talk to you later about it. You can show me a few things. I don't understand the question correctly. You repeat that? Um, so, I, I mean, if it's a prototype, I'll be interested to use it to see not, not just the underlying technology, but also the interaction with, that the user would have with the system. So. Uh, there is no user interaction necessary, that's the point. We just create a reference to any kind of CSE. 
any research result, and you don't have to any have any interactions. You have a PID which points you directly to the research research result. So you end up there. You end up there. It looks basically the same. You would not see any difference. Okay. And as a user, you may not even recognize that you are now accessing the data via a research data center. It's not visible. Just so a black box, basically. It has not to be. It has not, as, as you have a DOI resolve it, you get the PDF of the of the paper, and the same here. You would resolve the PID, you would get to the interface of the application, okay. and you will, don't see anything surrounding. The, it's a black box. Thank you. Even the PID is not uh, infrastructure specific, so it's just a PID. It's an infrastructure, therefore it's invisible. <laughs> you can brand it if you want, of course, uh, but uh, that's not what we're talking about. Okay. Any question, remarks? Maybe I have one or two, uh, if I may. Uh, first, uh, it's two linked question. First, do you have any relationship with the data site, for example? Uh, because I, th I see uh, a relationship with the, what they are doing. And second, it's in, in fact, it's in the continuation of your own question. It's about uh, how do you consider the uptake by the researchers of this PID system to cite uh, inside their publication uh, the references to data? How, what is the uptake? Do you have specific actions towards that? Um, to answer your first question, um, we didn't talk about data site, but uh, the Göttingen State an university library has uh, connections with DataSite as it will function in the future as some kind of service provider using this infrastructure and it could be possible to cooperate here but that's not um, the point today. And the second question um, regarding the uptake, um, yeah, that's why we have came up with this um, idea, because we looked um, at researchers in the humanities and social sciences, how they cite and what they maybe want to cite, and um, we will find that um, this is some kind of, of gap. Um, they have workarounds, so each researcher or project has <coughs> at some point its website, but it will get offline at some uh, point in, in the future, and it's of course not possible to point to very specific um, aspects of the research data and this is why we came up with a fragment PID to use a technology that is already established and quite easy to, to handle for us as infrastructure <coughs> providers and trying to enhance uh, this because we have uh, yeah, encountered this demand from the researchers. So your, your objective is to make it easy to use for the researcher and yep. it will help for the uptake. You want May to just add a, a comment? We have here at, at, um, at Göttingen, or um, Standort, um, at the place Göttingen, we have two different systems. We have either data, data site, which provides DOIs, but we also have the Persistent Identifier Consortium at uh, GVDG, or the infrastructure provider. And um, the, the Persistent Identifier Consortium offers also PIDs, Persistent Identifiers, just called PIDs. And um, DOIs and PIDs do have some kind of different purpose, or ideas where to go. And uh, so DRIs is more for publications and papers, or you know, paper publications, and um, PIDs is for the waste of uh, data, existing data, which you just want to cite for your data management, for example, but can also be used for, for publications um, of, of data at the end. And of course, we are working closely together with uh, this data site. Um, in, in how much PIDs are actually going to be used in, um, for data citation, it's an open question and we just can push by offering our service to the community. 